I'm waiting for your very positive responses, people. We got everybody? Um, just moments ago, on the House floor, we passed by overwhelming numbers the ability to keep government open for the next six weeks. We've got to understand why we are here. The Senate has produced not one appropriation bill through the floor. The House, more than 70 percent of discretionary spending has now passed. I do not believe our troops need to be punished for us not getting the work done. So I ask Congress, we'll stay in session the next two weeks, continue to work to get this done, but you cannot look the men and women in our military in the eye and ask them why they are not going to be able to pay their bills because the Senate hasn't done their work. Look, I know a lot of you always ask me all the negative questions. I'm sure every bet you had was government. How many times you're going to count us out? But if there's one thing you should start understanding, not just that I'll never give up, but I'm a type of conservative that wants to get things done. It's easy to be a conservative that wants to do nothing. But I believe America wants to find the conservative that can make government work efficiently, effectively, and accountable. And that's exactly what we're doing in our appropriations process. In the wasteful spending, in the wokeism, but most importantly, secure our border. Our president, who never once talked to any of us during this challenge of, shutting the, of the government shutting down, he watches night after night how thousands of people cross this border illegally because of his policies. The largest number ever in the last month. For 50 years, he has been elected office. He has been to more dinners with Hunter Biden's business partners than he has gone to the border. Things have got to change. Our border has to be secure. We've got to end the wasteful spending to, to end the inflation that he has created. And that's exactly what we'll do and exactly what we are doing when we put our commitment to America to work. With that, let me introduce an amazing team up here, from our leader, to our whip, to our conference chair, to all those members who worked so hard. And let me tell you, today wasn't the choice we wanted to have. We tried to pass the most conservative stopgap measure possible. We had members from all sides of the aisle work on it. We put it on the floor, but unfortunately, we didn't have 218 Republicans that would vote for that to help us secure the border then. But today, we're able to move forward to make sure we can challenge that. And one of our best leaders out here is our majority leader, Steve Scalise. Hey, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And today the House came together to do our jobs to continue this battle and believe me, this is not the end. This is the beginning of a continued fight to secure our border, to get government spending under control, and to get our economy back on track. And that means for the next 45 days, we're going to be working through the remaining issues. As the Speaker talked about, starting Monday, we're coming back here in the House to continue the appropriations process. The House has now passed over 70 percent of government funding in the appropriations bills. We've passed those bills over to the Senate. The Senate has taken up zero appropriations bills that they've passed. So it's time for the Senate to start doing their job. It's time for the appropriations process to keep moving forward. The House is going to keep moving forward with the remaining appropriations bills. All the bills that are still out there, both sitting to come to the floor, some there are two that are still in committee, all those are going to be moving in the next few weeks. Starting Monday, we will be back here working on those remaining appropriations bills. But as I will remind everybody, over these last few days, you saw the House pass over 70 percent of funding of government appropriations bills to the Senate with the priorities of the House to address our border crisis, to address getting our economy back on track, to get our military focused on the threats that are posed by countries like China. And so that focus will continue. Our work will continue. There is a lot of work left to be done. There's another 45 days. That doesn't mean that what just happened today ends. That means these next 45 days, we're going to be busy working here in the People's House. It's time the Senate 
do that same aggressive form of work. And it's long past time that Joe Biden get engaged in this process as well. He opened the southern border. He created a mess that has riveted the entire nation to the point where Republican mayors, Democrat mayors, Democrat mayors who are switching to Republic because they're fed up with the open southern border and the damage it's causing not just to our southern border, the damage it's causing to every community in America who is now a border town because they're seeing the deaths from the fentanyl overdose. They're seeing people coming across in every community, people on the terrorist watch list, coming across by the thousands every single day, and Joe Biden hasn't cared about this crisis. The American people care about it. House Republicans care about it. We have now continued to push and will continue to push over these next 45 days to get this border crisis solved as we work to solve all of the other problems holding our country back. With that, bring up direction given to us by our speaker, our majority leader, our conference chair, our membership. And it was like riding a mechanical bull all week uh, as we made our way through stuff that nobody ever thought we could do again. Uh, I want to thank the speaker for his leadership uh, because what he tried to do was work with every member of our conference. He tried to make sure that everybody's voice was being heard, that everybody had a chance to take whatever vote they wanted to. I, they were all given an opportunity to vote for the best bill you possibly could have had yesterday. A spending cut, border security, disaster aid, and uh, we just couldn't quite get that one over the, over the line. So after exhausting everything else, this uh, speaker understands that shutting the government down is not an option. And for those naysayers out there who say, oh, sh let us shut down, if you're a fiscal conservative, you do not want the government to shut down because you are going to pay a whole lot more uh, if that happens. And I, our members, I'm grateful that they understood it. I will tell everybody, no, I'm not happy. Uh, we did not have 218 Republicans still. Uh, that doesn't work for me. And we're going to have to do a better job of making sure that happens. Uh, but I'm very pleased uh, to be part of this team and all of our members. And again, Kevin, thank you so much for taking the bull by the horns and putting this thing on the floor and getting it done. Our conference chair, Lee Stefan. Thank you, Tom. As we face this challenge, Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, House Democrats, showed zero leadership. House Republicans will continue to step up to lead. Under the leadership of our speaker, this leadership team, but most importantly, all the members of the House Republican Conference, we get the job done and deliver on behalf of the American people, keeping the government open and importantly, continuing the appropriations process to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. And this was despite House Democrats' attempts to delay, to obstruct, and to even pull the fire alarm to stop this important vote from happening. We're going to continue to stand up on behalf of the American people. And despite being underestimated every week, we see you every single week and you underestimate us. We will continue to get the job done on behalf of our constituents across America. And I'm proud to turn it back over to the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. I was really appalled of watching Democrats' actions today to delay it to get to a shutdown. But when we found that an individual elected to Congress would pull a fire alarm, that's a new low. We watched how people have been treated if they've done something wrong in this Capitol. It would be interesting to see how he is treated on what he was trying to obstruct when it came to the American public. With that, I look forward to your very open and optimistic questions that you have been asking this entire time. So let's turn to CNN. <laughs> I've been praying for you. Yeah, well, as you, as you know, this threat of your speakership has been hanging over you for some time, and especially if you align your Democratic votes here, and Democrats just have to carry this to the Constitution. Do you expect to align on Democratic votes if the vote to vacate comes up? Will you need Democrats to keep you in the Okay, can, it, can we now realize what the question was and realize what has happened today? We were within a few hours of government shutting down, where the military would not be paid, where 
the border would not be paid. They talked about FAA having problems because only the House has passed a bill and the Senate has not. It's been your, I imagine on his network he probably had a shutdown clock on. The Senate stymied of what they can do. All of that has now been waved away. And the only question CNN has for me today was whether I'm worried about someone making a motion to vacate against me. No, let, let, let's understand what the bill was. We put a bill on the floor in suspension. So there's no bill that can pass with one party or the other. When are you guys going to get over that it's all right that you put America first? That it's all right if Republicans and Democrats join together to do what is right? If somebody wants to make a motion against me, bring it. There has to be an adult in the room. I am going to govern which what is best for this country. I don't understand how long will it take to you understand that. I went 15 rounds. The same individual that voted against us even having a more conservative stopgap measure. The same individual who threatens it, that, that delayed us from ever getting all of our appropriate bills done. Did the same thing during the speaker's race. That's okay. He has a right to do it. But I'm going to be a conservative that gets things done for the American public. And it, whatever that holds, so be it. Because I believe in not giving up on America. I'm not going to be beholden to somebody who portrays and does something different. Yes, sir. No, the Senate hasn't advanced anything. The Senate hasn't advanced one appropriation bill. The Senate hasn't advanced anything for the FAA. The Senate hasn't advanced anything for the Parents' Bill of Rights. The Senate hasn't done anything for energy, and the price of oil is $100. They haven't done one appropriation bill. So please, praise the Senate some more and ask me your question. Well, my question is, will you put a free Ukraine on the floor in the next 45 days? Listen, what the Senate wanted to do was focus on Ukraine in front of America. I understand our responsibilities, but I'm going to put America first. If there is a moment in time we need to have a discussion about that, we will have a discussion completely about that. But I think the administration has to make the case for what is victory. And I've asked the administration to come down and talk to our members about that. Yes, sir. And I want to congratulate because you have spent overtime here. And you wear a tie when the guy next to you doesn't even have a, a well, you have a college shirt on. But, let me, let me give you this experience there. Were you doubting whether we could get the job done? Were you doubting we would make that happen? All right, okay. Listen, Winston Churchill once said this about America. You can always count on Americans to do what's right after they exhausted every other option. It is very clear that I tried every possible way listening to every single person in the conference. When we went to vote on appropriate bills you didn't think we could pass, we passed them. It was tough, but we got it through. We made sure we came down the last hour. Would I have wanted the bill we put on the floor yesterday that would secure our border, cut wasteful spending? Yes, I did. But I had some members in our own conference that wouldn't vote for that. So if you have members in your conference that won't let you vote for appropriation bills, doesn't want an omnibus, and won't vote for a stopgap measure, so the only answer is to shut down and not pay our troops, I don't want to be a part of that team. I want to be a part of a conservative group that wants to get things done. Yes, sir. Look, one thing about me is I'm never giving up on the American people. I'm going to focus on America first, and I'm going to solve those problems. I believe at the end of the day, we'll get them back on board. Yes, ma'am. Look. I think so it's very important. If we're worried about Ukraine's border, we should worry about America's border too. And I, I think an opportunity to solve the border along America is now one of the biggest issues in New York. The governor of Massachusetts of emergency. The governor of New York tells people to go somewhere else. The, the mayor of New York City says it's destroying, which many in this country believe is one of the greatest cities America has. And we have a president that has only been to the border one time in 50 years, but went to Cafe Milano twice 
with Hunter Biden's business partners and got $3 million for it and his son got a new Porsche. I, you know what? I will do whatever it takes to get the president to come down to the border. Bring one of Hunter's business partners. I don't care, but we need to secure this border. Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's a daily basis. You watch for nine months. I hope they learn from me that I won't give up and they'll know I'll keep fighting. So it's better that we all come together. When we all come together, we're much stronger. I've watched what we've been able to achieve so far. Think for one moment. When Washington, D.C. wanted to decriminalize almost every single crime, we united. The Senate said they wouldn't get up. We had 172 Democrats vote against it. We had the president say veto it and end up signing it. We went and heard parents across the country. They'd get arrested when they'd go to school board meeting simply because they wanted to talk about what was happening. We passed the Parents' Bill of Rights. We ended the pandemic when they said the Senate wouldn't take it up and the president wouldn't sign it. We passed the most conservative border security bill in the history of Congress. We passed an energy bill that would make us energy independent and create more jobs, lower inflation. We were able to get the largest cuts in American history during the debt. We were able to cut more than $2 trillion, get work requirements that the President said would be a red line, get NEPA reform for the first time in 40 years, and put a provision in that would put a 1% cut across the board if the House and Senate doesn't do their job. We got the Senate at least to pass approach bills in committee. They just have a hard time getting it to the floor. So the one thing I've learned is get things done, bring others along, and look. I welcome those 21 back in, and we would get a better and more conservative bill if they would simply vote with us. Yes, ma'am. I didn't get it. Mark Wayne Mullen, a former member of Congress and a dear personal friend of mine, um, he was great. He was, he was in the House. He was being able to convey what was happening in the Senate. No, I talked to Senator Thune many times, and uh, I thought Senator Thune did a tremendous job through it all. I had worked with McConnell um, early on in a lot of this, too, but I didn't get to talk to him today, no. Okay, let's understand. There's different ways bills come up. If I bring a bill up under a rule, it only takes 218 to pass. If it's on suspension, it takes Republicans and Democrats together. We had the majority of the Republicans voting for it. But let's put it in perspective. What happened prior to the bill? The Democrats first wanted to adjourn. Can you imagine hours away from shutting down and they wanted to adjourn? Then they came down and all voted by a card to delay it, to delay it, to delay it. Then the leader went and took a So I think at the end of the day, we kept the government open, kept paying our troops to finish the job we have to get done. Y yes, sir. You know, I think ethics should look at this, but this is serious. Um, when you think of how other people are treated when they wanted to come in and change the course of what was happening in this building, and to, did he deny he did it when it's on tape? And I'm going to have a discussion um, with the Democratic leader about it. But this should not go without punishment. This is an embarrassment. You're elected to be a member of Congress. You pulled a fire alarm in a minute of hours before the government being shut down, trying to dictate that government would shut down? What's going through a person's mind like that? But we will find the right ability to deal with this. Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. And what, what, what Russia has done is wrong. But I believe in whatever we do, we have to have define what victory is and what the plan is. And I think what the White House needs to do is come down and talk with us and lay it out where we have a part of it say as well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
That, that is training money. I think there's a frustration across America that sees this president ignoring America's border and more concerned about somewhere else. I truly believe if he would focus on America, we'd be in a stronger place. Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you tell me what bills in the Senate in the appropriations they passed? Has the Senate passed any bills? Yes or no? No, have they passed any bill? Has the Senate passed any bills? It's not a tough question. Yes or no? Did the Senate pass a bill? You want me to answer it for you? Or are you not covering it? I can answer it any way I want. You have a right to ask me a question, but I have a right to answer it. So are you embarrassed because the Senate hasn't passed any bill? Is that why you won't answer it, or do you not know the answer to the question? The answer to the question is the Senate is a different body in the House. The House has a right to act and have a say in the direction they want. The Senate can pass any bill they want, and then you go to conference. When the Senate passes a bill, I'll be surprised, and then we can go to conference. In 45 days, we should get our work all done. Yes? Look, I like to save whatever dog. This is interesting. If you had, you do have a child, but as your child gets older, if I have two kids, if I give my Connor and Megan 100 bucks to go to dinner, one spends 100 and one spends 90, should the other spend all the way up to 100? If we can save money, let's save money together. Let's lower whatever we can do. If we can save for the hardworking taxpayers, why can't we have that discussion? It doesn't mean you have to spend every dollar you want. That's a spending limit. That's the agreement we made. If we, have it, if we find that it's worthy, we could spend up to that. But if we find places we can save money, you know whose money that is? The hardworking taxpayers. Let's try to save it. Last question. Yes. Next question. Yes, sir. Where are you at personally? Right here. <laughs> Where are you at personally on the aid to Ukraine? Look, I think what Russia has done is horrendous. I have a real concern of what's going to happen long term. But I don't want to waste any money. It's, as a question was asked, how long ago? That was a year and a half ago about Ukraine aid. And I said, no blank check. That's what I mean about anything. I want to make sure whatever I vote for, that it's going and it's held accountable. I think there's accountability problems that we have to go. But I also make sure that we have to fi finish the job at the same time. Thank you all very much. I look forward to all your uh, positive questions in the future.